welcome. It's a pleasure to see more than a hundred people here this evening um, to celebrate this event. We also live stream in the event. It's our first attempt and I welcome many friends and alumni who are joining us from all over the US this evening. I'm delighted that you joined us this evening and I hope to see you next November for this annual event to celebrate, recognize and applaud the College of Ed's alumni and friends. Before we begin, I would just like to take a moment because oftentimes this is done at the end. Um, I think the setup this evening looks exceptional and I'd just like to take this opportunity to ask those individuals that were involved with the planning and impl implementation this evening to stand so we can recognize them. Please stand. <laughs> Thank you. The goal of this event is fourfold. First, to recognize and publicly thank named scholarship benefactors and the recipients of those scholarships. Secondly, to recognize the recipient of the Rosa Mary Endowed Professorship <coughs> in School Effectiveness and Improvement. Thirdly, to recognize and publicly thank the, the 37 individuals and or organizations who have given to the college in 2013, 2014. The college is in the very early stages of friend raising and development work and this continues to be my highest external priority as Dean. Last year, we increased giving by more than 80% from the previous year to a total of close to $60,000. Fourthly, this evening, we wanna induct the first class into the College of Ed and Human Development Hall of Fame. But before we move on to these recognitions and celebrations, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Dr. Rich Hansen, Interim Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs to the podium to share remarks. Rich. Well, good evening. And uh, on behalf of our uh, President, uh, President Foss, I'd like to welcome you to, uh, to this event as Daryl has uh, described. Uh, you think about a Hall of Fame and uh, what better uh, sort of phrase or event to welcome back alumni to uh, the campus and to uh, honor them. But it also reminds me that uh, we should, and maybe we do, I, may, I don't think we do, but our faculty and staff in this college, uh, they're in their own Hall of Fame. So I would like to ask our guests to give a hand to our faculty and staff that are here today that work every day. <laughs> if you think about a Hall of Fame and uh, why we're here tonight, there is, uh, no better group to recognize uh, than educators. And uh, the special folks that we're going to be honoring in the Hall of Fame uh, are examples of that. But all of us in education, you, t you think about the selfless work that we do, that you do, uh, being concerned for others on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, managing, mentoring, uh, working uh, with new teachers or principals or folks that are entering the profession and moving through. Uh, yeah, tremendously important to our society and uh, uh, to our workplaces and schools. Uh, but the most important thing is the impact that you all have on young adults and children that we're working with in our schools. And there's no more important and sort of valuable task to our society than the work you're doing and that the work our faculty are doing here at the University of New Orleans. So I wanna thank you for coming. Uh, enjoy the evening, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing folks after the ceremony. Thanks. Thank you, Rich, for your words, and I thank you publicly for your leadership over the course of the last 10 months or so. It is truly a pleasure to work with you to advance the academic enterprise Although you will be missed, you deserve a slower pace in family time. Enjoy. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> 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 
One of the great joys as a dean is my engagement with alumni and friends of the college. Since my arrival in the college next, nearly 16 months ago, I continue to write monthly thank you notes to alumni and friends who give to the college. And I invite them to visit with me when on campus, and I indicate that I intend to visit with them when I'm in their zip code. That's especially true of those who are joining us via live streaming this evening. Often they call me, as did Mark Storms. Mark Storms could not be with us this evening, um, but I've prepared some remarks that I'm going to share with you nevertheless. Mr. and Mrs. Mark Storms established two scholarships, namely the Marty Hurley Schol Endowed Scholarship and the Storms Endowed Scholarship. Let me tell you a little bit about each. The Hurley Endowed Scholarship was established in 2010 to benefit both the College of Ed and teachers it educates by providing ongoing funds to an educator at Brother Martin High School who is pursuing a degree or continuing education credit. The scholarship is designed for Brother Martin teachers who are strongly encouraged to work towards certification, advanced degrees, and also to consider degree and certification work outside their main area to meet the needs of the school. The scholarship is named in memory of Marty Hurley, the deceased band director at Brother Martin to honor his leadership, inspiration, and support of the students at the high school. The second scholarship, namely the Storms Endowed Scholarship, was established in 2013 to benefit the college and teachers it educates by providing ongoing funds to an educator at Mount Carmel Academy pursuing a degree or continuing education credit. It's designed for Mount Carmel Academy's teachers who are strongly encouraged to work towards certification, advanced degrees, and to consider degree and certification work outside their main area to meet the needs of the school. Mark and Barbara, his wife, intend to continue annual additions to these scholarships to support UNO, Brother Martin, and Mount Carmel. Even though Mark is not with us this evening, please join me in thanking him and Barbara for their generous gifts. <laughs> I'm delighted to share with you that we have the 2014 and 2015 recipients of the Hurley Endowed Scholarship with us this evening. Please could you stand when I read your name and share a little about each of you and let us hold applause until the end, if possible. George Edward Merritt, the third, Ed. Ed received his, he goes by Ed. I'm not making a name up here. <coughs> and we chatted a little bit before the event. Ed received his undergraduate degree in classical studies from Loyola University in New Orleans. He is a native of the Crescent City and an alum of Jesuit High. He currently teaches Latin at Brother Martin High, the alma mater of some of his siblings. He is the eldest of six. He and his wife, I've got Jennifer, but I heard earlier she goes by Jen. He and his wife, Jen, regularly volunteer with a youth group at St. Clement and the New Orleans TEC community. Ed is currently in our secondary English MAT program. Join me in congratulating Ed. The second recipient of the Hurley Endowed Scholarship is Cherie Treg. Cherie, could you please stand? Cherie is currently studying for a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. She is a certified Spanish grade 612 teacher. She has a BS in business from Sedinary College and completed an alt cert program at Our Lady of Holy Cross College. She has been teaching high school Spanish full-time for eight years, with the last six been at Brother Martin High School. She served as the World Language Department Chair at Brother Martin from 2012 to 2014. Please join me in congratulating her on her award. <laughs> Shifting.
shifting gears, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize our talented faculty in the college and the way that Rich uh, has done that previously. Um, at this point, I'd like all faculty in the college to stand, please. I know there's lots at the back there. You can be seated, not that I have to tell you. <coughs> we only have 24 faculty who teach close to 1,000 students in 15 different programs. Many are teaching this evening, that's why not all 24 are, are with us. I want to thank you for what you continue to do for our students and the programs. It is with pleasure that I would now like to call on Dr. Anne O'Hanlon, Chairperson of Educational Leadership, Counseling and Foundations, to publicly recognize Dr. Brian Beerbout, the Rosa Mary Endowed Professor. Anne? Good evening. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Dr. Brian Beerbout, who tonight has been named the Rosa Mary Endowed Professor for School of Excellence in Business. He is most deserving of this honor. Brian has worked at all levels to improve schools, as an English teacher in the New Orleans public school system, as a parent, as a community member who has helped to establish a Morris Air charter school, as a UNO professor teaching school leaders, and also as a researcher. His research focuses on educational change and reform, community engagement, and leadership for social justice to better meet the needs of all children in the education system. In particular, Dr. Beabell's research takes an intriguing approach that views schools as human systems made up of people who, not surprisingly, do not always behave in predictable ways. He also views schools as systems that have inputs, outputs, and purposes that are unique and separate but remain nested within these political, economic, and social systems. By examining schools in this holistic way, Dr. B. about is able to get closer to what would be the true experience to those who are charged with the reform of schools and develop practices and theories that better match their actual experiences. His research agenda has produced more than 25 publications and 40 conference presentations. And other researchers have taken notice of Dr. B. About's work and recognized its importance to the field. In 2013, Dr. B. About received the prestigious Emerging Scholar Award from the American Educational Research Association. He also has been extremely active in the local educational community, most notably with Morris Dare Charter School, where he has served in virtually every role imaginable, from proposal writer, board member, grant writer, fundraiser, committee member, and community uh, relations liaison. He's now extended his efforts with charter schools to the national level, and he is an advisor for the National Coalition for Diverse Charter Schools, an organization that supports groups that are trying to establish and run charter schools. He participates very actively in the local dialogue and educational issues and has been featured numerous times in the newspaper and interviewed on TV and radio. Dr. Beabout has been named to the One to Watch list in education developed by the staff of the New Orleans City Business, and we in the College of Education agree. Dr. Beabout is indeed someone to watch as he continues his research agenda on educational change, charter schools, and community engagement. His work will continue to be a powerful influence for school improvement both locally and nationally. Congratulations, Dr. Beabout. Congratulations again, Brian. I'm excited that this professorship comes with resources to enable you to further advance your work, your career, the college, and UNO. 
and joy and content. On behalf of the College of Ed and Human Development, I'm honored to recognize the 37 generous people and organizations who donated money to the college in 2013, 2014. At least half these alumni or friends could be here this evening, and I thank you for your gifts to the college. Please could you stand at this time? Those who gave to the college, don't be bashful. <coughs> thank you. Your names are projected this evening. We will include your names on our website under donors, unless you tell us otherwise. And you should have received a packaged lapel pin when you checked in this evening as a small token of our appreciation. For those who are not able to make, not able to be with us in person, we will mail that small token of appreciation to you in the next few days. As I said earlier, I've shared thank you notes with you, spoken with many of you on the phone, or you received a voicemail from someone with a strange sounding tongue that does not represent any of the different New Orleans dialects. <coughs> and I'm happy to meet with you this evening or to be connected with you via live streaming. I look forward to more interaction with you. It is not only about the money you donate, as important as that is, but how you can connect us with your network and how we can draw upon your expertise to advance the college. As I've told you many times, you and our 10,000 alumni can assist us by asking 10 other alums who you meet to become more engaged. We need you and other alums to be active participants in our community and in continuing to shape our story. Please join me again in thanking these very kind donors. final order of business this evening is to recognize our inaugural Hall of Fame inductees. What does it mean to be inducted and what are the criteria? I'll be brief. Our honorees represent a bridge between our 50th birthday last year and the next 50 years of the college. Our honorees were our distinguished speakers at our signature 50th celebration event last year. Our four inductees are exceptional leaders in their own right and field. Beginning next year and in, in succeeding years, the College of Ed and Human Development Hall of Fame inductees will be nominated using criteria, as was the case for this class. Nominees will be peer reviewed in the spring semester by the current four Hall of Fame inductees who serve as the selection committee. They make one to two recommendations to me in the spring so that we can prepare for the Hall of Fame 2015 event where I hope to see all of you again. Annually, your names, the names of Hall of Fame honorees and the year they were inducted will be inscribed on a plaque that will hang in the Dean's Conference Room. Now let us celebrate our honorees. I will identify each of our honorees I will share some brief remarks about each of them and then ask them to briefly uh, come to the podium to share some reflections with us. We'll give them a UNO inscribed vase that bears their name and the award and then they'll have their picture taken. Again, I ask that you hold applause until the end unless uh, you absolutely can't and I won't hold it against you. When I share with you what they've done, um, you will drown us out with applause. Our first inductee is Dr. Patty Glazer. In terms of her formal education, Patty earned her doctorate in curriculum and instruction, specializing in charter school design in 2008. She earned her master's degree in communication disorders from the LSU Health Science Center in 1982. And she earned her bachelor of science degree from Dominican College in 1976. She is a lifelong learner. She's a school leader. She is newly appointed founding leader of Discovery Health Sciences Foundation Schools. She is most proud 
of their high B academic score and is now searching for four and a half points to achieve an A next year, determined. <coughs> as, an, as assistant head of school at Lusher Charter School, she helps educate over 1,700 students on three campuses. And she serves as president of Holy Rosary Academy and High School. She's also taught as an adjunct instructor at UNO in the late, 19, late 1990s and early 2000s. On a personal note, she's a native of New Orleans and proud of it. She took the city bus to the French Quarter and rode her bike to the lakefront regularly. She loves to swim, travel, read, and dance. I would like to hang out with her, <laughs> except for the dance part. <coughs> She is the lead writer of five charters approved statewide. She loves the Beatles and most music. My daughters do too. And she has been married for a very long time and has two sons and beautiful daughter-in-laws and no grandchildren yet. And I believe, I believe your sons and daughter-in-laws are with us this evening too, so thank you for being here. Um, She's passionate about kids learning and people having a sense of humor. Another great trait to have. Patty, congratulations. I invite you to join me at the podium to share a few words with us. usually spontaneous, but tonight I made notes for myself. Jeff, they're not long, so it won't be a long talk if you already made me promise that. But I just wanted to thank Dean Kruger and the entire UNO department, especially of curriculum and instruction. I'm both humbled and honored by this award. While I appreciate the distinction, I more appreciate that UNO helped me hone the skills that I need to wake up every morning and go to a job that I love. I have 583 reasons to show up to that job every day, <laughs> and they make sure I'm there and I'm on my toes. Um, and Diane, if we get our way, we'll have even a larger group than 583 when that expansion gets approved and we grow to be pre-K through 12th grade. But Dean, I'm asking you don't retire my jersey in the arena. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> I'm going to ask Dr. Foss not to retire my jersey in the arena. There's still lots of work left to be done at Kenner Discovery, and we're up to doing it. So speaking of going to work each day and keeping a schedule that I keep, which is quite busy, it would not be possible without my loving husband, who escorts me to these kinds of events day after day. I know Larry Stokes can relate to this. Um, fills my car with gas, fills my air tires with air, you know, crisis moment when I have to be somewhere in 10 minutes and it's not done. Um, problem solving, both big and large. I'm convinced he can leap tall buildings when necessary. He's a constant support behind the scenes, and much like his father, my son, which I love the grandchildren of Mark, by the way, <laughs> one of the two is here, the other's in L.A. Um, not my son not only volunteers every Thursday morning at the school coaching Lego League, but he moves heavy aquariums when that needs to be done at school. He rewires printers and computers, connects local networks, proofs charter proposals when needed, and basically does anything else on the list that needs to be done at school. My mom's here tonight. She, Mom, raise your hand. She was born in 1924. <laughs> As some of you know, she celebrated a 90th birthday this year. She earned a bachelor's degree in chemistry before most women earned any degrees at all. So I'm not a first generation college person um, and in chemistry of all things. She went on to earn an advanced degree in her 50s, which was an inspiration for me to follow suit. So since I already had a master's, I had to go the PhD route. My sister's here tonight. And she gave me my first role as a speech therapist because she allowed me to talk for her when we were young. And for me, that was a great thing, and she loved it too, so she would say, take it away, Patty. So <laughs> that worked. Um, we raised our two sons. I entered UNO 
this is interesting, as a freshman in 1972, met my husband in, to be in the first semester, stayed a couple of years at UNO, and then left to pursue degrees at other places. We raised our two sons on courtside seats during the Tim Ryan reign here, and I continued to pursue coursework over the years, always finding some class or another to take. Finally, in the 1990s, at the urging of Renee Kasberg, I became an adjunct professor, officially entered the doctoral program, and earned my first UNO degree, that terminal degree, which I still don't like that name, in 2008, 36 years after entering as a freshman. It took me a while, but I got there. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure the reason they chose me tonight is because I keep showing up on their doorstep, and they're like, maybe if we give her this, she'll just kind of stay away. <laughs> but um, whatever the reason, I'm, I'm finally thrown in the towel. I'm not taking classes anymore, and proudly UNO classes come to us. They come to Kenner Discovery. Right now we're hosting the Social Studies of Methods class and the Corrective Reading class, and we're hosting a couple of classes again next semester. So we just love having their support. We're helping train their young students in education, and we really hope those students come back and apply to Kenner Discovery. And speaking of support, other than those already mentioned, I have a plethora of friends here tonight. They volunteer at the school, they help run a complex lottery, they buy gala tickets, they sponsor special programs, they audit our records, they donate supplies, auction items, make copies, and they even direct traffic on hectic carpool days. <laughs> I could not have achieved so much without my large array of friends and family as backup. I also could not have achieved as much in my career without the academic preparation provided by UNO. Since opening UNO has given so many urban students a chance at education, that's giving them a chance at a fulfilled life. And I love that that's the mission of the school. They make it affordable, they make it accessible in terms of times and, and ways that they offer classes. To help that mission, this is a bit of a surprise to everyone tonight. My husband's also a UNO College of Education graduate and the Glazer family, Bradley, the Glazer family, not Glenn and I, would like to establish an annual $1,000 Glazer Education Scholarship to be awarded to a remarkable senior in education. Um, we'll set up criteria later, but we would like to do that for you all. I want to thank all of my colleagues in the Department of Curriculum and Instruction, Dean Kruger, Peter and Laurie Foss, and I'll see y'all at the next home basketball game in courtside seats. I want to thank you <coughs> and your family for your generous gift uh, to the college to enable uh, a student uh, to um, work their way through college or maybe work less to, to work their way through college. Um, Patty and I spoke earlier this week and um, I thought it would be fitting that she announced that this evening. So thank you to both of you for that. Um, please let's give them a round of applause. Our second inductee is Dr. Larry Stokes. Uh, Larry earned a PhD in counselor education from UNO in 1998. He is joined this evening by his wife, um, State Representative Julie Stokes, as well as their two young children. Thank you for being here this evening to um, support your husband and father. He specialized in rehabilitation counseling with a minor in research and statistics from UNO. 
He's a licensed rehabilitation counselor, licensed professional counselor, and is board certified in rehabilitation counseling, case management, psychotherapy, and life care planning. That's a mouthful. <coughs> it's impressive. I'm just glad I could get it all out. His work is focused on predicting return to work in litigated personal injury cases, particularly in the area of employability, placeability, and wage earning capacity. He has taught as an adjunct assistant professor with a counselor education program in the college. He has also taught as an adjunct assistant professor with the Department of Clinical Rehabilitation and Counseling for the School of Allied Health Professions at LSU Health Science Center. He is on the board of the IARP Louisiana and is a member of the American Counseling Association, National Rehabilitation Association, National Head Injury Foundation, and other specialty associations within those parent organizations. He has been in private rehabilitation practice since 1982. Larry, his wife Julie, and children like to travel, and I enjoyed visiting with him earlier this spring to learn about their proposed summer sojourn to Europe and the United Kingdom, and I had the good fortune this evening to visit some more with them to learn of their experiences. Larry, congratulations, and I invite you to join me at the podium to share a few words with us. Thank you, Dean Kruger. I appreciate it very much. I'm very honored to be here tonight and to be given this opportunity to be inducted into the Hall of Fame for the College of Education and Human Development. I want to thank the college for everything that they've done for me. I have two rounds with the college and um, first um, undergraduate work in education, which I graduated in 1977, and then, of course, my doctoral work, which I finished in 1998. I'd like you to promise me, though, next time I don't have to follow Patty Glazer if I ever have to get up here again, because mine is not nearly the exciting story that Patty told. And, and uh, anyway, but great job. You, you deserve it all. I want to also thank the many dedicated uh, and talented faculty and staff members of the college for all the guidance that you have given me, have given me through the years, not only in my time studying at the university, but the time since. I have kept in touch with a lot of you, your friends, colleagues, and I appreciate everything you do, Dr. Watson. Uh, I, I certainly want to thank you for the opportunities and the work and help you've given me, Dr. Herlihy as well, and of course some of the faculty members that are not here any longer that were guiding me, Dr. Dr. Grimley, Dr. Murgatroyd, Dr. Park, and many others. Thank you very much, Dave. I have to say that I am just was completely shocked when Dean Kruger called me about this honor. And <coughs> I was sort of in a daze for a while, walking around the office thinking, what does this mean? What have I done? Uh, what, what can I do? Um, how, ha how has this happened? Along the way, I've had a lot of help, getting a lot of advice from people, a lot of assistance from people, particularly those such as my family, my wife, Julie, who was mentioned, of course, was instrumental in keeping me in school, making sure that I completed. Of course, the kids, I, I do this for you. I do a lot of what I do for you as an example so that you will achieve. I, I was brought up in a family where my parents said that a good education is very, very important, and they wanted me to go on and get that education, so I stuck with that. I want to thank you guys, of course, for being here. Also, my mom. Delva Stokes, who's here, who was one of those people that gave me that advice, along with my dad, James Stokes, who is no longer with us. Also, my brother, Jimmy Stokes, who's here, who has also been part of my, my endeavors and also worked with me for some time after Katrina. Uh, I, I started working with injured workers when I got out of the Navy, and I didn't really know what rehabilitation counseling was. When I started off in, in high school, I started thinking about what I wanted to do. I had no idea. I went to the guidance counselor and I said, you know, I'm interested in what I might do after high school. 
And she turned around. She said, do you want to go to college or do you want to work at something? I thought, well, trade sounds hot and hard, so college sounds much better to me. So she turned around and she gave me a stack of catalogs and said, here, pick something out of here and do that. And I thought, is that all there is to guidance counseling? Maybe there can be more. Now, little did I know that probably that counselor was overwhelmed. She probably was, I was in an all-boys school, and we had a lot of boys. She probably had a ratio of 450 boys to, to, uh, to one counselor. So I don't blame her for not giving me any or other guidance. She did give me the catalogs, and I did pick the College of Education at the University of New Orleans, and so here we are. Um, but I did want to find out what is out there. I asked my parents about, counsel, about careers, and they said some very good advice, although it wasn't very specific. It was be whatever you're going to be, but be the best. So that sort of stuck with me that I've strived all my career to try to be the best I could be at the time and with ever whom I, whomever I'm working with. So I wanted to, to do that. I, I learned about counseling by doing it. In graduate school, in my master's program, you learn some of the skills, but really, you know, the education is actually getting in there, rolling up your sleeves, and walking with people through the process. You heard a little bit about my background. I specialize in working with people who are injured, and that means that every day I have to hear tragic stories of how people's lives are changed through accidents, injuries, illnesses, and so what I try to do is to walk with them. I think that my purpose is to help them get through the process. I specialize in forensic work, do a lot of court testimony, and it doesn't matter what side I'm on, as they say. I'm on the side of the whoever I'm evaluating at the time to try to help them figure out what the story can be from then on because we're talking about changed lives. That's what the College of Education and Human Development did for me. And by the way, I'm really proud that the name was changed uh, a few years back to the College of Education and Human Development because I think that humans are beautiful, complex, difficult, enjoyable, happy, fun people to work with. And the, the, the development part of it is extremely important to me. So I just, I'm very glad about that. I wanted to also thank some of my colleagues who are here. Dr. Aaron Wolfson is here with us. He works with me on a daily basis. And Todd Capilano, who Todd is also a graduate of this program in, I don't know what year, but uh, the master's program in 96. <laughs> Forgot, huh? <laughs> yeah, too. Well, it's been 32 years now that I've been doing this, and I have another um, at least 10 more, and it never seems to go down. Our retirement plan never seems, my retirement never seems to go down in numbers. It stays at 10 no matter how many years I stick around. My wife is a CPA and a, our financial officer of our practice, and so she, she never subtracts any years from the time that I'm going to work anyway. <coughs> but I want to thank you all once again. Thank everybody for your, your support and encouragement through the years. Dean Kruger, Dr. Foss, distinguished guests and faculty, staff of the university. I appreciate everything you do for me, and I'll continue trying to help. Some of the best years I had at UNO were the years that I taught after I got out of my doctoral program. Ted Remley was uh, with the department then, and he said, I want you to teach a class in human development. I said, I've never taught a college class before. He said, you've been in college all your life. You can do this. So I did, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Our third honoree this evening is Dr. Brian Reidlinger. Brian earned a PhD in, edu in educational administration from UNO in 1998. He earned a bachelor's and master's degree from LSU. His wife, Carmen, who is also with us this evening, is also a UNO educational administration alum 
earning her PhD in 2004. Thank you for being here as well this evening. Brian is currently CEO of the School Leadership Center of Greater New Orleans, called the SLC, a post he has held for the last 15 years. SLC is a principal center focusing its effort on school leaders in order to increase their skills, thereby improving student achievement. SLC works with all public, parochial, private and charter school principals and assistant school leaders to build their leadership capacity and promote networking with a goal of refining their best practices. Since its inception, SLC has trained more than 400 school leaders and their five member school leadership teams through the Fellows Program and more than 300 schools through its Discovery Walk Program. For a period of three years immediately following Hurricane Katrina, Brian also served as the founding CEO of the Algiers Charter School Association, the AS ACSA. As CEO of ACSA, he selected new professional staff and led a team that opened six schools that eventually grew into nine schools, all located on the west bank of the city. ACSA was the first group of schools to open after Katrina. Previously, Brian was a principal in the New Orleans Public Schools for 20 years and was selected State Principal of the Year in 1999. I've had the good fortune to meet and interact with Brian and folks over at the SLC many times in the last 16 months, and I look forward to closer collaboration with the SLC and Brian. Congratulations, Brian, and I invite you to join me at the podium to share a few words with us. I stand here tonight um, humbled and honored at simply being considered uh, as a candidate for UNO's first Hall of Fame, um, College of Ed Hall of Fame. And um, so let me start with profound thanks to everyone involved. Um, I truly feel blessed in what I do, and this just adds a little icing to the cake, and I appreciate it. I do a lot of professional development in my role. Um, and so when I was asked to make remarks, the first thing I thought of was a PowerPoint. So I have selected 10 slides to present for you tonight. I'm looking at the crew right here going, what is he talking about? Um, I really don't have slides, but I'm going to ask you to use your imagination. And I'd like you to, to walk with me through um, my time at uh, UNO um, when I received my PhD. And so if you're ready, first slide. Here I am in 1985 in my first class with Bob Wimpleberg teaching us the four frames, Bowman and Deal's four frames. And what you see in this picture is my cohort, the folks that I started with. These folks challenged each other, they challenged the professors, they supported each other, and many of friends still today, and a lot of that has to do with uh, UNO and the time I spent here. Slide two, this is a group shot of that cohort. Notice how diverse it is, and I think that's important. They're tall, they're short, they're black, they're white, they're young, they're not so young, they're public, private, and parochial. They're every size and shape, kind of like UNO. We call ourselves the buzzards, and if you'd like, I'll explain that to you later. Slide three, this is four years later and I was granted a sabbatical from my principalship and I uh, spent the year working with Ira Bogosh here at the college, um, doing some writing with him. It was a wonderful opportunity to see um, how the other half lives, how folks in the university uh, uh, work as a graduate assistant. Okay, if you were in schools, you recognize this slide because this is a faculty meeting. And you'll notice the, the distressed look on the part of all the teachers there. And the distressed look is because I am now trying to explain something new I just learned at UNO. The teachers used to regularly say, you know, keep that stuff at UNO, don't bring it here. Um, 
But I can tell you that I wasn't doing a good job at transferring that learning. But over time, I got better at uh, transferring what I learned at UNO to, to teachers and principals and other folks that I work with. Here's slide five. That's AERA in Chicago. I want you to notice it's kind of a group photo. If you look all the way to the left, you see Dr. Carolyn Cody, who used to uh, be in the College of Ed here right next to her, is her husband, State Superintendent Bill Cody, when he was uh, uh, State Superintendent in Louisiana. Uh, in the middle, you see a big teddy bear looking guy, Terry Deal, uh, one of the authors we studied a lot. But this is an example of how the professors took us to Chicago, brought us to AERA, introduced us to those folks who we read about, um, and took us out of the realm of just learning about it and reading about it to actually meeting the people and operationalizing it. Slide six. This is a study session as we cram for our um, qualifying exam at Do uh, Donaldo Batiste's house. Notice on the right the two coffee pots. This is me at my uh, dissertation proposal defense. That's the first three chapters. Uh, note the professor at the other end of the table because he kept telling me that my writing needed to be more academic. Pay, pay special attention to that word academic. Slide eight. This is my major professor, Peggy Kirby, who may hold the record of graduating the most folks out of here in the doctoral program. And uh, this is the frustrating look on her face is as she is trying to teach me how to write more academic. Slide nine. This is my dissertation defense. As you can tell, I passed. Notice I'm jumping up in the air and yelling loudly. Slide 10 is graduation. No explanation necessary. Confucius said that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, I have at least 10,000 pictures clearly etched in my brain of my time here at UNO. Simply put, UNO's College of Ed changed me. They changed my life professionally. They changed my life personally. They helped me strive for more, to learn more, to question more, to read more, and exploded me in a way that I just never would have dreamed. I'm different because of the College of Education here, and I'm really just honored by, by being selected for the Hall of Fame. Thank you guys. Finally, inductees, Dr. Yvonne Adler. In terms of her educational experience, Yvonne says she thoroughly enjoyed being a student at UNO from the late 1970s through 2008. She earned a PhD in special education in 2004. With regards to her professional experiences, Yvonne spent 34 years as a teacher and administrator in St. Charles Parish Public Schools. Her educational training included that of a speech language pathologist, special education teacher, and administrator. For the last seven years, she has served as the high school principal at the Academy of the Sacred Heart in New Orleans. She also served as a UNO supervisor of student teaching and an adjunct instructor. That's not one of the criteria to get in the Hall of Fame, but it seems like most of the folks have that in common. On a personal note, she's been married to her husband, David, for 34 years. I had a, the good fortune to meet and chat with him and her this evening. And she's the mother of three daughters, Emily Adler Bodie and Margaret and Elizabeth Adler. She is the daughter of Jane and Billy Sandoz from Opelousas, Louisiana. She's an active member of the St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church in Old Metairie, where she serves as a Eucharistic minister and lector. She also serves as a Eucharistic minister at Chateau to Notre Dame Nursing Home in New Orleans. I had in my notes here that I am pleased to share that 
her mother is with us this evening, who's 86 years old, but she shared that she could not be with us this evening because she wasn't feeling well, but send her regards to us nevertheless. <coughs> Yvonne, congratulations, and I invite you to join me at the podium to share a few words with us as well. Thank you very much, Dean Kruger, for this honor. There are many worthy graduates who have benefited from a wonderful UNO education, and that fact makes this recognition even more meaningful. These brief remarks will revolve around only one theme, and that is gratitude, specifically gratitude in four areas. First, gratitude is owed to President Foss and Dean Kruger. Dr. Foss has demonstrated great leadership on behalf of our beloved UNO. Thanks to his tireless efforts, he has expanded UNO's role even on an international level, as far away as Malta. Dean Kruger, we're grateful for your efforts to maintain UNO's reputation as Louisiana's premier university in teacher preparation. Second, gratitude is owed to my family and our dear friends. Were it not for my wonderful husband, David, my attendance at UNO for over three decades would not have been possible. Our three daughters, Emily, Margaret, and Elizabeth, were patient as they experienced moms going to college while they were in school. My mother and father encouraged receipt of as much education as possible, and our three daughters took their grandparents' advice to heart. Among our three daughters, they have seven degrees. Our son-in-law, Dave Bodie, has three degrees, one of which is from UNO. Also joining our family here are our dear friends, Walker Syke and Liz Manthe, and we're grateful for your being with us tonight. Third, gratitude is extended to our beloved St. Charles Parish Public School. One of our greatest blessings in life has been that of spending 34 years there as a teacher and administrator in this excellent public school system. This progressive school district molds professionals into ethical educators who are immersed in integrity and character. And fourth, we're grateful for the Academy of the Sacred Heart. Being the high school principal there is a tremendous privilege. Each day we concentrate on molding girls into leaders of tomorrow on an international, national, state, and local level. We transform young hearts with a focus on our five goals of Sacred Heart Education involving faith, intellect, service, community, and personal growth. In summary, we're grateful to President Foss, Dean Kruger, family and dear friends, St. Charles Parish Public Schools, and the Academy of the Sacred Heart. May God bless each of you and our beloved UNO. Thank you. alumni, friends, and colleagues, this event is meaningful to us all because it enables us to step away from the daily humdrum, albeit briefly, to reflect and appreciate, celebrate, and create community. The college has a powerful story with 10,000 alumni. Seven of 10 live and work in three parishes, and you know which parishes they are. You are not only a part of the story, 
but you bear the responsibility to, to tell, shape, and influence our story. How might you ask? Through your talent, through your gifts, through your network of teacher and counselor educators, leadership community, and health educators. In the weeks, months, and years ahead, tell at least 10 alumni that the college is strong and poised to deepen its impact in the greater New Orleans metropolitan area. Ask them to join us. Remember that individually we are strong, but collectively we are powerful. Thank you for, sh for helping shape our story. Thank you for being here this evening. Um, good night and stay around and enjoy some of the food and drink. But thank you again for being here.